Jay Royal is back in the house with a relatively unknown fragrance company. Welcome to Jay Royal, everyone. My name is James, and this is a channel where we talk about fragrances, colognes, perfumes, for the people that are very new to the whole collecting aspect of things, to the seasoned frag heads that are just knee deep in their fragrance addiction. This series is about showcasing fragrance houses that I don't necessarily talk a lot about. They're fairly new to me, and I wanted to introduce them to my audience as well. They're a fairly established niche fragrance house from Paris. They started back in 1975, and they've been going ever since. I'm of course talking about Le Jardin Retrouve. Now luckily being part of this fragrance community and being a YouTuber, the guys over in Paris, they sent me seven samples of their fragrances just for me to try. There was no expectation for me to review them or really give my thoughts on camera, but I decided to do it anyway. What I've been doing is I've been testing these fragrances. I've been wearing them, rotating them, re-wearing them in different conditions, and I feel I have a pretty solid understanding of them on my skin. What I can say is of the seven fragrances, I was pretty pleased with all of them. They're all very pleasant fragrances, but some of them just weren't for me. They didn't work on my skin for whatever reason. I've split them off into three fragrances that I just wouldn't buy, three fragrances that I'm on the fence about, and one fragrance that I'm crazy about. And although this isn't technically a list video, I'm gonna turn it into one. My number seven Le Jardin Retrouve fragrance. Retrouve. The number seven fragrance on this list is... Oh, hell no. Oh my God. Tuberous Trianon. Tuberous Trianon. I'm Canadian, but I'm not French Canadian. Now the main note of this fragrance is of course tuberose, which is a note that gets thrown under the bus quite a bit. It often gets labeled as a granny fragrance note. That's kind of a cop-out criticism. It's just what people tend to say and think. But what's nice about this fragrance is it's a combination of florals. So there's tuberose, there's ylang ylang, there's some jasmine, and there's a slight fruity berry-like quality that's prominent in a lot of these fragrances. What's also nice is this does last a long time on my skin. I do get about 12 hours of performance, and that floral quality carries on throughout the entire fragrance. Normally florals are fairly fleeting and they kind of disappear after a while but not this one. It really, really goes and goes and goes. Like most of these, it is an eau de parfum concentration and it shows its strength. I'm weary about wearing florals in general and this one is extremely floral. So it's not a fragrance that I could ever see myself wearing. It's also not a fragrance that I would recommend for people in my age category. I know I said calling it granny is a bit of a cop out, but yeah, it's a bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit old school. My number six fragrance is going to be Rose Trocedero. Really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I really like this fragrance. I thought it was very interesting because it wasn't just your standard Rose Absolute fragrance. It's supported by Black Currant, and I love that. It also feels like a rose flanker of Kiehl's Original Musk because it does have a very clean musky quality that really melds extremely well with the rest of the fragrance. It is a beautiful composition that performs very well, just like the last one. And it's one that I kept wanting to smell over and over and over. But that being said, I wouldn't buy a bottle of it personally because it doesn't suit my personality whatsoever. There's only a few rose fragrances that I would proudly wear on a regular basis. And I'm very cautious when I'm considering another one in my collection. This is one that I think you should check out if you do like rose. This one delivers. And especially for my women out there, really good stuff. The next fragrance on this list, at number five, is Eau de Delice. Now, I would argue that this is the easiest fragrance to wear in this entire sample pack that I got. It is your classic gentleman cologne style of fragrance. That slightly green citrus quality that works in so many different fragrances. Now, in the base, it is stated that there's oak moss and patchouli and a little bit of cypress. Those notes are very, very faint on my skin. And it's largely due to the fact that this is the only eau fraiche concentration in these samples. It is an extremely short-lived fragrance on my skin, almost disappointingly so. I get about two hours of respectable performance, which sounds terrible, but the only bright side is if I wanted to wear something in the morning, I don't have to worry about this clashing with another fragrance that I want to wear in the afternoon. And I've done that, and that's why I've gotten some good wearings out of this. But that being said, it's not bottle-worthy to me, because 
I want my fragrances to last longer than that. Even if I want a scent of the morning, I'm usually waking up pretty early and I need at least four or five hours, or I'm more than willing to shower <laughs> so I can put on a new fragrance. It's still a wonderful fragrance, but just keep in mind, you're not gonna get very good performance with this. It's really meant to be lathered on. You have to spray liberally to get respectable performance. Okay, now we're moving on to the next tier of fragrances. These are the three that I really enjoyed, and I'm sort of on the fence about whether or not I wanna go ahead and pull the trigger and buy a bottle of them. I wanna wear them some more and really get to know them a bit better. So without further ado, my number four fragrance is Sandalwood Sacre or as we say in Russian, Sakhar. This is an interesting one because it has that same original musk type quality that's in the rose one, but that musk is paired with woods. And not just sandalwood, there is kind of an oak moss type of feel to it as well. But there's also that green patchouli in the mid that is quite natural and very well blended. Orange blossom is a listed note. I don't necessarily get that. If anything, there may be a touch of that same orange that's found in Terre d'Hermes, but I mainly think it's just a little bit of the coriander mixing with the musk to give it that sort of fresh, slight stinkiness. I love the scent profile of this one quite a bit. It's not a huge projector, although the longevity was respectable. I did get six, seven hours. What's nice about soft projection is I didn't really feel paranoid about wearing this in my Uber. You're not going to offend people because it does smell cozy and fairly natural. It doesn't smell like a fragrance that you would choke on because it's too alcoholic, but it was just a little too low key for me. Next up we have Cui de Russie. Ru, 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 Russie. Russian leather, great. Now what's interesting about this fragrance is it doesn't smell like a lot of leather fragrances I own. It's definitely animalic with its use of Styrax, but it's softened with some woodiness and almost a slight gourmand-like spiciness. I do get cinnamon in here. It does feel very fall friendly, very festive. It does have that wonderful violet note intermingling with the other notes, which does make it very masculine friendly. I do like the way this one smells. It does have a coziness, and even though it's animalic, it's still inoffensive, and it's something that you can confidently wear indoors and outdoors, and that's a big plus. It almost smells like a toned down version of a zoologist fragrance. It does have that very slight DNA similarity, but being French, it's just a little more light and pleasant. But it isn't one of my top ones, only because it feels like it's caught in between two ends of the spectrum, where it's trying to be bold and animalic and masculine, but still delicate, which could suit someone's personality perfectly if you have that inner dichotomy. But I'm almost on the mindset that if I want to smell animalic, I'm going to go full animalic. <laughs> but a really interesting fragrance and something that the leather fans and the animalic fans will really get a kick out of. Really got a kick out of them, dude. Really got a kick out of it. Next up at number two, we have Vévin d'été. It has a lot of similarities to Eau de Delicie, except this one is an Eau de Parfum concentration, and you can tell, it does perform a lot better. While the first one was a little more about citrus and some theoretical woods, this one is citrus and then green qualities. You have an herbal undertone to this with basil that sort of balances it and gives it a bright earthiness. It's an extremely wonderful signature scent worthy fragrance that is just great for a more sophisticated man. But the only reason it's not number one is because number one, is an absolute banger. And finally, my favorite, Le Jardin Retrouvé fragrance is Citron Bobali. According to the notes, Italian lemon is at the front. There's also bitter orange and pettigrain and galbanum. And interestingly enough, a little bit of black pepper and cloves. Now don't be scared, cloves is definitely a note that can be overdone and it can really overpower a fragrance, but it is just sprinkled in perfectly in this one. What you're left with is a wonderful citrus dominant fragrance, but it isn't your basic tart lemon balm. The use of citron is flawless. And when it's combined with the pedigree, it almost gives it a candied lime type of feel. And the use of black pepper and cloves gives it a little bit of a culinary vibe. So lime in a culinary setting, to me, if Allure Homme Edition Blanche is lemon meringue pie, this has a tiny bit 
of a key lime pie type of feel. Although it's not quite as creamy as Edition Blanche with its use of vanilla, it's not as brash with its use of citruses, and it's that same bitter orange you might find in Terre d'Hermes, but not nearly as dirtied with the notes of vetiver and all that. Citron Bobbly is a really, really fantastic fragrance that is very unique, and it lasts a very long time considering it's such a fresh, delightful, vibrant fragrance. This is one that I definitely want to get a bottle of. I think it's absolutely worth getting. Please, if you like fragrances that are very unique, but still fresh and zesty and citrus dominant, this is one you must check out. I want to thank Le Jardin Retrouvé for all these samples. It has been an absolute pleasure trying these fragrances out. I encourage you all to check them out. You can get a sample pack like I did. It was packaged beautifully hand woven wrap with a personalized card just you can really tell the care this company puts in other fragrances i like them but you know what that's just my opinion and you can have your own opinion by trying about yourself so just get your own yeah i think you should get your own man why not if you want to check out more j royal videos i got some videos here and here and there's a subscribe button there so there you go. I did it all for you.